Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today I'm going to run you through five things to do with your NetAlly AirCheck G2 in less than five minutes. The first thing you should do is claim your product on Link Live. It's a pretty cool little portal. You just log in, um, add your device using the serial number on it, and you're good to go. So this portal is going to collect by default, you can always change it, all your test results from your air check. It doesn't matter if it's a simple connection test or if you're going to be walking around doing some kind of site survey, it will actually record everything you did with the corresponding res results. Now, the only thing I could suggest to you is make sure if you do a lot of tests or just good practice, always make sure you create a folder or an album for that site or that test so you can organize all your results better. This part is pretty cool. Now the air check, if you're not familiar with it, has an ethernet port on the side of it. So if you connect that ethernet port to your network, then you can use VNC to remotely connect to that device and work your air check remotely. Because when we troubleshoot Wi-Fi problems, sometimes you cannot be there all the time. So it's pretty cool if you could leave the air check in a closet or you know at a desk, you know, a place where it's not gonna walk obviously. And then you could run your tests and do your monitoring from wherever you happen to be. Now, because it is VNC, you can use um, any operating system to connect to it now. It doesn't matter if it's Linux, Windows, Android, Apple, whatever it is. As long as it's got a VNC client on it, you can remote into the unit and you could do all your tests remotely. This simple test has gotten me a lot of mileage over the years. It's um, just checking your channel usage. And when you do that, you obviously find out what access points are on what channel, uh, which is pretty helpful. So in this example, uh, this was, believe it or not, this is here in the office. I found there was two access points on one channel, which I find odd because I never leave channel selection on auto. I always manually select them when I can, because sometimes you can't. But the weird thing was I went, it did say auto, so I don't know why that was the case. So I put it back to manual. And when I hit save, it did not reflect channel one. It just sat there on channel 11, even though it said that it was restarting and it said that it was applying the changes and all that good stuff, it didn't do it. So then I actually had to reboot the access point physically power it on and off. And then sure enough, it popped up at one, six and 11. Now in some places where it's extremely crowded, then obviously there's going to take a little bit more effort, but it's just really good to quickly check things out and make sure the access points are on the channels that you think they should be. And try to stay away from auto if you can, unless you really trust that product. Now, it really doesn't matter if we're talking about 802.11, ABG, NAC, what, what, it doesn't matter. Um, you should really make sure you understand the capabilities of the access point and the client, because if they both don't support a certain capability, well, you're not really going to get the throughput or the performance that you were promised by that product. So it's really important to just quickly take a look at this point. Uh, of the day, I say, you know what, just pick an access point. Here it is. I picked a band, five gig, uh, and the air check comes back and it tells me 80 megahertz channel, so on and so on and so on. But then if you click on the 802.11n capabilities in this example, or the AC capabilities, actually that's the one I did was AC, then it gives you a breakdown on a lot of extra information. Uh, everything from the channel width to uh, the MCS index, which is your modulation coding scheme, um, you can actually check that out to see what that looks like and how well that's going to work and how many streams you've got, all that good stuff. So it's kind of nice to use a product that's not a laptop or a phone or whatever that I can actually trust to record this information for me that could probably explain why I'm getting the throughput that I am. And sometimes the access point supports a capability and the device that it's talking to does not, right? So just keep that in mind. It's a good way of proving that kind of stuff out. Now this one I run into quite a bit. This is a really neat little exercise. So if you have an SSID called uh, Tony's Place, right? Um, and you have several access points with that same SSID. Which access point are you connected to is a good question to start with. But a better question is, can you manually connect to a different access point um, or BSSID 
instead of the generic SSID and then your, your kind of your device figures that out for you. So in this case, you can see that there's two access points for this SSID called five gigahertz. And if I hit connect, it will connect. It will actually tell me which one it's connected to. I can also go the extra step and I can physically pick whatever access point I want and it will connect to it as well. I find this uh, very difficult to do on Windows um, operating systems. It's, uh, I'm going to say hit and miss at best. And even Android, I've got an Android phone. I've tried all sorts of utilities that claim to do it. And again, they're all hit and miss. I don't know why yet, but it's just so much easier to use my air check because I know it's going to connect to it. I know it's going to work. And then I can always look at the log just to verify what it did connect to uh, versus what I thought it should have connected to. There you go, folks. Have a good day. Bye for now.